Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh, getting some more work done on my beaver. Uh, last video we got done to getting the shifter done, the muffler installed, and the brakes hooked up. So we now have all the electrical components have come in. The new fan has come in. Plug that in, I think screams. The amount of air it moves. The mass link came in and so is the uh, bilge pump. But uh, for ground use, we still need the throttle cable hooked up and we could probably deal with getting the battery and the key switch stuff squared away. Uh, on top of that, we also have a mounting plate to go up in here. I want to come up and grab some more support for the engine up top. So hope we can get that stuff done on this video. One thing I looked into was the gas tank. Again, on the last video, this light's going to get you. On the last video. The nipple is no longer tight to the fiberglass, so it's going to leak around that. I think they believe they had the fuel line kind of pushed way up and, and caught some of the fiberglass and clamped it. But uh, a few people mentioned even on a couple of videos ago that the gas, the new fuel with ethanol in it will eat the resin that's in the fiberglass and cause it to go gummy. The fuel I have right now is Cam2 racing fuel. It doesn't have any of that in there but um, that's something to take in consideration in the future. So we, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on that yet. I may just cut that tank right out from under there and we'll stick another tank up and through and use this uh, outlet, just like a, um, yeah, a larger version of something like that plastic tank. We can go with up underneath and uh, put the gas cap up here. That might be a better solution for that. Again, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Let's get on to other stuff. Right, executive decision. I decided to work with getting this structure in place, which is gonna help support the top of the engine from rocking side to side under, uh, when you're kind of riding conditions and bouncing around. Right now, it's just held by the fiberglass floor. It's got uh, wood uh, impregnated into that, and then I put a metal skid plate underneath there. But again, this thing is over 50 years old, and uh, you know, we kind of modifying their design a little bit. So I want to give her a little help in hand with that. So before we allow it to rip out of the floor, we're going to build a support. What was up on top was this plate, which was the setup to hold the governor and the gas tank mounted to that also. This was the original throttle that was hooked up. So I think we can kind of gut a lot of this stuff, maybe cut off all the excess around it, whittle it down to the four bolt flange that we need and we'll build up off of that and then from either on the plate or uh, from up top this is the isolators that have a little bit of movement in between them so we'll go with a, a pair of those somehow somehow hey right, so i'm screwing around a little bit unfortunately we're gonna have to kind of hold the camera oh, that's not going to work let's get them both on the same page all right we're gonna do this uh, camera free Free handing, so it's going to be a little shaky. Uh, I clipped off a couple of the things on the plate there. I got two screws just kind of indexing where that goes. And I quickly kind of measured from top to bottom and cut a piece of one by to fit up inside there. So I figure we can probably, you know, wherever we need to go and weld onto that plate that we clear the exhaust should be good. And then I figure that can kind of come up through the body there and there. And we can bolt that down. We can get some fancy hardware for the outside, but for now, we'll just throw some, some washers and nuts on. We can get some castle, nice castle nuts or something where that pops through. But my, my thinking is if we go to take it apart, if I just weld this onto the top of that, how are we going to get it out of there? Because this is encapsulated, you know, up through the holes and then the plates push down there, even if you, yeah, you, you're not gonna be able to get it out of there. So this has to be able to unbolt from that. Follow me? Because if, if these are up through the hole and that is just welded to the bottom of that, you're gonna have to slide that plate out of there to, to clear these guys. It's not like these get unbolted from the top and then there's room to slide it out. So what do you, what do you wanna do? We got that hole in the center. Might as well put a bolt through there and maybe we'll weld a piece of angle bracket. So I, cu I cut up a, um, a hinge. I cut up one of these. So what if we do... 
right, where were we? That's going straight up. Can we go? And bolt it like that. And then the piece of pipe can weld to that. What do you think? If we pull that bolt out, that would allow when the bottom's unbolted, it'll be the other way around. It's going to be that. That's the fiberglass up to the fiberglass of the body. Let's see if we can do this one. I'm not going to off the edge. Okay, so they can bolt together. That can be the piece coming up welded to it. Cut the rest of that off. So, if we need to remove it, we we're going to unbolt the bottom plate. And if we unbolt that, probably like that, I'm thinking. And then this will only be. Yeah, however long that is going to be. Uh, if we do it the other way around, if we do it like this, and I take the bolt off, and I unbolt that guy and that guy, this will be able to drop right out of the way. What we'll be left with, we'll be left with an L. I think that'll do it. That's probably the way to go, right? Make it like so that bolts together. Yeah. You agree? I think that's gonna work. Yeah. Whoops, let's try it. So I got that mocked up and in there, bolted through the top. I think they're, they're hand tightened. So that's what we got, the bracket going across, a bolt in the center of it, and then the L kind of going down. I was like, okay, why don't we weld to the back of that guy right onto the plate. Then we can beef up the plate from there but even after i thought about that okay so we got that all welded together as one we unbolt that one section i still think it's going to be rather difficult once we get the four bolts out of the bottom take the exhaust off even with that to try and wiggle that plate out of there with the top of the l bracket so close to the roof even with that all removed i think it's going to be a struggle to try to wiggle that thing off you know probably has to go that side to get it out of there. Um, what if we don't weld these two together? We weld the top where the nut is, and then we come back with another piece of angle, the same thick angle, and we go across the bottom. And right here and right here, we'll bolt it. So we remove these two bolts, remove those two bolts. That whole upper section will come right out of there. And then coming out the bottom plate, we'll have one that stops and right about there and that'll be much more easy to work i uh, might be able to work it with the exhaust on think that'll go yeah, let's go try that we get a couple of angle brackets to cut, cut up anyway so let's uh, section a piece of this one let's see if that'll fit and let's see if that'll work for us something like why does it seem like it's it is that'll work but I think I need to put more of a bend on the bottom that needs to go more like that let me see if I can kick that a little anything about five degrees Need a little more try that I think we got it right on the money. Awesome. So now we need to mark. We need to mark where those two holes are. And I'll drill them out and bolt it together. And we actually kind of prep. We should prep that lower plate 
and the lower part of this, we can get a couple of tacks on it. Now, is that right? If I unbolt that, can I get that all going this direction? I think so. How's that for a conglomeration? So we should be able to put that up, catch the body, and then that welded down to that plate. We can unbolt it here. I'm gonna leave this bolt in it uh, just in case. Uh, why make it harder for ourselves? If I find that it kind of wiggles around, I don't think it will. I think there's enough give in these rubber bushings up here that nothing's gonna be shaking itself apart. But let's get that back in there. I should have marked down below so I can kind of cleaned up that area and get a couple of tacks on it. Well, with those nuts on just so that I don't have to worry about trying to get that hardware together when it's back behind there, we just can undo those two front bolts. No turning back now. As long as I can get that out of there, take the two bolts out, the top of the bill will drop right out. And uh, as long as you can get that plate out of there, we are good. I also want to tap on, we could probably do the dipstick, make a brace to that hole right there. And then I want to come up with a clamp for the muffler. We can come up right off of here. I don't have one, you know, something like, something like this, but the right size. Figure what we can do. Actually, you probably go either way. We could probably even just weld the the magnet of the light screw. I was initially thinking of taking the cradle, welding the cradle down below, like that, and have it come through and bolt and grab it. But I think getting those two nuts on there might be a little on the difficult side. So I'll pick one of those up tomorrow when the uh, store is open. But that'll be good for those. So we can use that plate for all the same and we'll cut off a little bit of excess. We won't need that piece across the back. We could slice that down and uh, maybe carve off this corner so that we have more room to work that out of there. That should be great. Some, at some point, <laughs> yeah, like I ever will, is I like to pull the engine apart, take the governor assembly out of the inside of it. But for now, we're just gonna run what we got. All right, see if we can get that out of there and weld it up solid. All right, drum roll, please. I think if we cut that off, may not even need to. Let's, I'm gonna buzz all that up all the way around. That bolt's gonna be a little tight to get in. And I wanna come down with a, uh, a support going this way and a support coming this way just to kind of also give this thing so it doesn't want to because this plate's kind of thin it can wrench a little bit over time so i'm going to buzz that solid and gusset gusset got it Pluses of having a bird bath. That ought to work. I don't think that's going anywhere. She ain't the prettiest, but hey. Hey, put it back in. I would say that is going to do the job very well. That's nice and sturdy now. I was just afraid if I could, you know, start hammering it a little bit, that was just going to rip out the floor. So. That tying it from the top and just holding it nice and, and steady, I feel much better about. So what do you want to move on to next? I ran uh, two wires. Well, I'll have that plate out because there's two wires that exit out from underneath there. One's the power wire and the other one is the, the kill. So I connected two wires to them and just ran them up front for now to, to uh, have that taken care of instead of trying to get back in there. Uh, I can still make... A bracket yet to the for the dipstick give that a little bit of support and you know if you're watching the videos it, it kind of you know vibrates around a little 
but on this one it wasn't it didn't have anything I don't think anchored to it we could try and then again we still need the bracket for the other side so we can revisit that I see we pop the air cleaner back on it and look into setting up the throttle I didn't put the air cleaner on yet I went off and on a tangent and did something else I went and uh, the carburetor that was on this I put all the pieces back together that with the original engine okay this is the throttle cable that was on the machine it goes to there hopefully <laughs> as I feel like it's moving there because the jacket problem is the jacket whatever is supposed to be supporting it I bet you that's what that tape is hanging hanging off the handlebar is for so I can't see it but you should be able to the cables all the way at the end of the jacket there's nothing holding the jacket I'll show you what I'm looking at cables all the end all the way at the end of the barrel nut on it and this has to be mounted somewhere is there anything there? To hold it from sliding up. Let's see a slot right there. I wonder if that's supposed to have that much. All the way back there's got to be. I can feel a little recess on the back. Yeah. So the cables just be tucked up in there instead. They ran a bunch of tape and stuff around it to hold it. It probably got too beat and too short. Uh, where does that cable run there? It goes up on the side. So it goes there, around the side, and over. That's a fairly, that's a, that's a, at least a six foot cable. Let me look in my bike cable stash eBay if I have anything that long. If not, we'll maybe work with that cable. These kits are like, like five bucks at Wally World. Oh, a bunch of cables. Actually that one, both of those look fairly long, don't they? Let's go. Also it'll be new. Not to be screwing around with. That may be very close. I'm gonna call that six foot. It's like that much too short I mean you could almost do it except for when you wanted to go steer that way yeah that one is about eight feet the other one's six so I gotta go try to clean up what we have so here's the two ends of the tables the tables the cable one has a uh, a nipple still on the other end of it and this end had like a um I'm trying to what you call those ball clamp a um barrel clamp and it's essentially it's a barrel with a set screw through it you put the cable through it and then the set screw goes through and, and pinches the cable and you can adjust on the bare cable where you want it so that's good for that end but this thing is kind of chalky it does move but for a throttle it's going to have too much drag. Let's get the uh, cable oiler on it and we'll try to shoot some fluid down it and work it back and forth. And then if that works for us, we'll uh, probably have to cut back some jacket to get some work room for cable. I showed this a bunch of times, but I think these are cool, so I'll show it again. <laughs> this is a cable oiler. What it has, it sandwiches itself together with like a rubber sleeve on the inside the rubber sleeve steps down more and more and more so on one end it just has a little tiny pinhole and on the other end it's wide open for the cable jacket and what it allows you to do is to put the cable through it clamp it down so I'm now pinched all the way around it. I pinched around the jacket, but it has a port to put whatever kind of spray you want to jam down the cable jacket 
um, in there. So that's what we're going to go do. Let's see how good this works. Stop you from shaking. Shot the top a little. Sometimes you got to take it and reposition it too. What you really like to see is you look at the end of the, end of the cable and you see it gooing out the other end. So I'm going to work this back and forth and then we're going to work the cable back and forth and see if we can get that to move much freer than it was. I got that in there. That's better. Let's... We're going to have to expose some jacket. Because that... It looked like underneath the handlebars there, it probably needed about that much cable. If it looked like it was fairly long reach, plus we need some cable back by the throttle area, by the carburetor area for we're working with. So we're probably going to need, you know, at least at least that much again for that side of it. Uh, I kind of what I want to try and do is clean off an area of the cable. What what happens to cable? You, if you slice cable. It has a tendency to open up and fray like that is and once you slide a jacket off of it you're never going to get the jacket you're never going to get holes all those back in there you know so you kind of want to deal with the cable ahead of time before you take it apart so i'm going to clean this with a bunch now that i shot it up with oil i'm going to take some cleaner clean this off take the heat gun kind of burn off some stuff and i'm going to try to get it in some flux and i'm going to try and tin this part of the wire to Make it so that even after I can take the cable together and apart a bunch of times, and it won't matter. Um, and if we when we run that barrel screw into it, it's not going to hurt it because it's essentially going to be filled with solder. Clean that against the wire wheel and some. Uh, carb cleaner. So I grabbed this, I got it from a yard sale. Uh, it's a solder pot, well, at least that's what it's being used for. And what I've been doing is taking a torch, just kind of heating it up. It takes about eh, two or three minutes, and the whole thing becomes liquid metal. And then I can take the cable and kind of dip it in it and keep looking at it and flexing it. You could do it with a soldering iron too. This is just something I've been trying and playing with. I kind of like it. Um, you know, you do what you feel you're safe with. Don't <laughs> don't use me for your judgment. Sometimes I'm missing that. I'm getting mighty thin on. Uh, flex here then on my shopping list anyway I am going to load up the cable the flux and sometimes it, it takes a couple of times but you really want to let it you, you want it so that it flows in all the pores you know what I mean you want the, you want the solder way down inside and make just like one solid wire on the end
looks pretty good. That's just the flux burning off. I'm going to go hit it with flux one more time. Give it one more. Why not? Right? You don't want to get built up too thick, though. Just cause another problem. Right. Now you want to make sure that you don't screw with that or bump into it or <laughs> that. <laughs> You'll remember that. Now I'm going to come back and cut it one more time. Should hold the phrase together like that. It still had one bristle sticking outward. Now hopefully, you got it pretty good. And you'll be able to back the cable up. Got the other end. Hold on. Shake your head. Should be able to back that up and then be able to push it forward. Still, it's hitting the, the case. We have it coming through. So now what we can do is we'll pull the cable right out of it and we'll cut off however much we need off the jacket and be able to slide the cable back up through it again. So we'll back that thing up. We could oil it now too. You can take it right out actually. We might do that. I got the cable right out of it. And whatever end looks worse. This one's got more of a... So let's go and knock off about... Hopefully this thing's not too short for us to, uh, actually we want to oil that first. Sometimes you can't, uh, you know, do this. Which one's bigger? It's gonna shoot all over the place. Yeah, push that mud through. I would say that's full. We'll feed that back in. So I fed that back through. And now we have that much cable to play with. We got uh, about 10 inches sticking out of there. 10, 11. So we'll hook up the front like it was, like it's supposed to be anyway. And then we'll run the jacket around the back, see how we end up at, uh, back at the carburetor. See if we can get you under there. So there's just a tie wrap here holding the jacket up into this slot. And then up front I came through the hole with the little uh, nib. I don't know if that's in focus, I don't think so. With the little nib on there. Then I put a couple tie wraps through there just to kind of um, let stuff assume its position. So that'll be... That direction will be... Idle. No, full throttle. Here's what we got left. Pull some. It's going to be tight, but it's what we have to work with, so. Should be decent. We'll pull that. There we go. That goes. So you hit them when you get thumbs, and that gives you the throttle. Oh, pull it. So we have to come up with either this direction or the other direction because that's that's idle. And that's revving it up. So we either have to come off of this side, make something come off of this side that we can pull on, or we uh, use that apparatus somehow. And we come from this direction. Well, let's get the air cleaner back on it so that uh, that stuff claims its space, and maybe we even can use it for some uh, mounting location. Hopefully you don't bang you around too much. I got you kind of zoomed in. So the cable, that's idle. That's full throttle. See, I'm looking at that tab right there. You need to be able to pull on an angle from either there or right here. The reason why I say that, if you try any other, you try pulling from this direction, 
you're pulling on that eye, that eye is going to go to a straight line and that's it. It's, you know, you're never going to get that last little room. It has to pull from that direction. Um, you could probably go a little bit past it. I mean, you don't want the cable kind of smashing into this stuff, but. But you can't go any anywhere on the inside of that, let's say. It would have to be from behind here. And that would have to pull from this side. This end has, would have to pull from this end. Same idea. I'm kind of liking this setup. I figure we might work with the tab that we have there. I haven't figured out how I want to do it yet. These are always kind of Mickey Mousey, you know. I'm gonna pull from. I'm thinking about taking a very small nut and welding it onto the end of this, so that the cable can come through it, and then we maybe we could put a barrel on the outside of the cable and just have that be retained by the barrel. The other thing we do is flip the cable around. We could feed the cable up through this hole. See that hole. We would have take this and bend it up so it faces that direction, right? Just like the very end of it. Then run the cable right through. The one that we have on the other side, maybe put a barrel on the other end. I'm going to take that apart and uh, yank on it with a pair of pliers. I think I'll screw it up. Possibility. I don't want to support it when I do it. twisted this way. I want to bend that throttle plate down below. That part sucks. That part's fine. That part sucks. It feels in it. Get we get a bow in it when you're trying to go full throttle. Well, because the end of that cable is soldered, why can't we bend it like the regular linkage would have been, which basically just had a jog in it, right? So why don't we make a jog in the soldered part of the cable? I want to go like that, right? Yeah. It's not going to come back out of his jacket, but because it's full of solder, it should stay together somewhat. It may be enough to go put back in that pivot point just like it was with the original linkage. So I'm going to go bend that back down and uh, see if I can get that in there. So where that is, it's kind of where we need to pull with a spring. I took a piece of steel and I think we're going to come off that valve cover bolt. We'll bend it. We bend that. Got the right about here. We'll drill a hole for the spring there. So let's go with something like that. Things long enough. It's gonna have a bend on it, so let's be down a little. We want to go a little taller. Let's go up to there, and that's gonna have a bend on it. As long as we can get this tucked under that bolt, 
That should do it. Kind of tug down on a little bit, clear our uh, breather hose. I think that'll give us a pretty good pull to there. Let's get that nut off, get it bolted up. All right, after uh, a tad bit of cobbling, I ended up pulling the cable through and bending itself over and putting two clamps on it. Seemed to be the best solution for now. And then up here for the adjustment, I just put one of the bolts back in for the gas tank and I took a washer and I bent it on a on a 45 and it just kind of grabs the jacket of the cable. So if you loosen this up, you can slide that cable to and fro for your uh, fine tuning. Yeah, it seems like it works fine for now. But I, I'm gonna need new cable. I, I think we're just gonna end up having, it be a little on the short side. So, it was good enough to run it for us. And I, I may even change that carburetor over to a motorcycle type of carb. But we'll see. We'll see how it kind of operates before I get ahead of herself. That bracket's in place and made up. We gotta run that vent hose back in. Uh, I think we are up to what? Battery? You can wire the battery to the starter, put the ignition switch in. Yeah. That yeah, so we can crank it with the key and then a gas source. I think we're good as far as getting it so we could actually operationally test drive it. Then we'll get into you know the pump and the the bilge pump. That's not necessary right now. Let's go get it so that we can fire it up with a key and actually uh, run up and down the driveway. Actually we're gonna go take on that again tomorrow. You guys will continue but I'm gonna call it a night. It's getting it's around ten o'clock or so. I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, I'll hit it fresh tomorrow. All right, so next day, uh, did a little shopping today. Grabbed some, some cork gasket paper, a couple of correct size clamps for the muffler, and a gas cap that will fit the, uh, the fuel neck. So we need to make a gasket up for that where it meets the body so that's what that's for i'm gonna get that tapped out not sure how well this is gonna work it's got a fairly sharp edge on it i figure maybe we'll lay that right on there and we might be able to tap on it from the top and let it cut its way in let's see what we get through to me that's that one now we got to kind of do the same probably going to support it on the vice though let's go to the edge Might have to double stack them too. I don't think it's tall enough. Yeah, I think we're going to have to make one more. Give it enough, enough height to it.
All right, so we're gonna get the ignition switch set up. The engine that came with it just came with this setup, very simple. Um, two wire, completes a path going across the, the terminal, uh, the starter relay. And uh, that is probably not gonna be good enough for what we need. I can go with a lawn tractor switch, but here's the switch out of the machine. And it was set up to run forward and back. It's got four outputs on it, but I just kinda wanna probe it a little bit and see what we got, see if we could possibly use it. I wanna be able to have um, the power wire coming off the engine, the charging system coming off the engine go and complete a circuit back to the battery, you know, switched circuit. I don't want to leave it live all the time because I think it'll drain the battery down. Uh, when I put the ohmmeter on the lead coming out of it, it does uh, show like six ohms resistance. So it, it definitely, I think, will backfeed. So it needs to be switched. But I don't know what we have. So I am just going to start hooking stuff up and see if anything decides to tell us that we have a circuit. Okay, so this one is closed. Okay, so hopefully that's open and then closed. That's good. That could be the, the path for charging. And it stays there. So we're going to say... So that one and that one is an on circuit. And then we're going to go and what else do we want to find? We want to find which one, which one goes to crank. That shouldn't be that. That's mega. That's way up there. Will that be it? Okay, and those two will be start. I wonder if this one will do this. No, we already checked that one, didn't we? Yeah. So we can have open charging system working and crank. So if we have power coming in, which one was the common? That one? Right, so if we have 12 volts come in on this one, that one in, this one could be the charge wire. No, I need that to be open. Nope. Okay, so this, this one will be power. On. Sure looks like power, doesn't it? <laughs> power on, and then what did we say? It was this one? In. Okay, so that'll be start. This one should be the reverse. Just find out. Yeah, when you turn the key backwards, is for that one. That was for starting the engine backwards. We don't care about that one. So that one could be out of picture. It's those three. I got to think about that a little bit more uh, on the charging system part of it. So we are going to have 12 volts coming in from the battery. Um, it'll tie to the charging system. That would be right because it could back feed, it could charge back the battery through that circuit. And then when we crank it, that'll put 12 volts out to the starter relay. I think we have it. Okay, and the way the starter relay works is you have 
12 volts heavy coming in right off the battery is because all the power going to the starter is going to go through this. So 12 volts heavy going in from the battery. This lead goes to the heavy lead going to the starter. And then this is the circuit that's going to turn it on and off from our key switch. So 12 volts is going to come in from the key switch and allow it to latch this. But one other thing is it needs ground to be able to uh, latch that the, the coil that's in here and that's going to come off of the body of this the ground so either we have to bolt this to something metal on the machine on the engine or we got to run a wire to it so that um, it can latch to relay it doesn't have to be really heavy wire it's whatever this wire is the ground wire has to be the same it doesn't have to be a real heavy lead because it's not doing anything for this part of it it's just uh, energizing that little coil i'm just going to kind of get you caught up and I'm in mid wiring, but I don't want to, it, it takes too long to try to film all that and uh, make sense in the same time. So I'm trying to just knock it out. For now, I just put the starter relay up here. I bolted it to the, this, um, the gas tank support. Uh, that will be the good ground for it, literally. It's grounded to the block. And the other uh, lead, this is a, an original wire that went from the original ignition switch harness to part of the starter on the uh, actually on the um, the coil setup that was up here so I used one of those to run the wire up to the ignition switch that's going to be the power coming back to it and I may tap onto one or two of the other ones not sure yet this one right here is power out so I just ran another wire up to the front because I already had I already had that wire attached. If not, I would have crimped into that harness. But I already have it attached back there. And we're going to run that one up. That's the other one going to the ignition switch. So that's going to, uh, when it's on, it's going to feed power back to the battery. So that's that one right there. And then I got to run one more wire, just 12 volts coming in, which is going to come right off of here, 12 volts up to the switch and that should make sure that the switch works the uh heavy wire going to the starter relay is right there going to the battery and i still have to run a ground strap and bolt it to the engine also so after that last wire is hooked up we should be able to uh, turn the key and it should crank should if we're battery i'm going to use uh this is out of a electric wheelchair it would have two 12 volt batteries in it, deep cycle batteries. So I figured it'd be a good fit for this. Hopefully it has enough balls to uh, crank it over. It should. Uh, if not, we'll go with a lawnmower garden tractor battery. But that was free. <laughs> Wait for the road runner to go by. Yeah, let's see if that'll suffice. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, probably no gas in it. Let's just make sure what we got. We can kill spark. <laughs> That's the gas pedal right there. Awesome. So you get that we need a kill switch it's the next thing that's that long yellow wire that has to go make a path back to ground for it not to run so i'm hoping when we put gas in it it does not leak out of that bottom there so we're just going to put a little in see what happens Everything is kind of loose and hanging. Got a few tie wraps here and there, but nothing. It's finalized yet because all the other wiring still needs to be done. So you don't want to tuck it all away. You want to run everything and then be good with it. I'm going to let that sit a minute. I'm going to look inside and make sure that the... Um, levels up over the top of that uh, you can see it but the tank itself is leaking that's no good we're probably gonna have to come up with another tank i may cut that thing right out of there and we'll come up with a, a plastic tank that comes up from underneath and hides underneath that fill neck 
I think we may have enough just to be able to, to run it. I still have a bunch of other stuff to do yet. Don't everybody jump on the bandwagon. What about this? What about that? We'll, we'll get there. I want to run it, right? Let's have some fun. So let's just see if it'll do what it's supposed to do. Uh, that's my kill. Down should be off, so it should not, it should crank but not start. <laughs> no, my kill is up. <laughs> Good. Gonna let that warm up a little bit. I'm gonna uh, adjust the carb. Turn up the idle. Turned it up a little. A little more. on the ground gotta make this quick run out of light feels weird using your left foot for the brake it up. I don't remember what's what. Guess I should charge that battery. Come on. Let's do it for us. <laughs> I just want you to go. You're running out of light. All right, we're going for the jump pack. Choke is in a run. Should run. Wants to fight me. Wants to ride around in the dark. pushing the brake as the gas pedal. <laughs> we don't need that anymore. Forward should be forward. racing. turn the wheel any further that other direction you'll see why in a minute
brakes work. <laughs> when I went to go make the turn all the way to this side, it pulled the throttle cable and it went full throttle. <laughs> I need a longer cable. It's cool. It's a little getting used to the steering though, because you're, you, you, you're, you're normally holding on to a steering wheel for the body, your support of your body. This, you can't do that because you're swinging it from side to side. So. <laughs> Burn off some crap off the muffler. Doesn't feel terrible in there. That's just all the oil coming off of there. It's not bad. Oh God, it didn't run very long. All right, I think we need to play with it uh, when the light comes out. <laughs> Maybe we have a little bit more room to uh, uh, have a shutdown area. Nothing broke yet. Headlight was flapping around like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gonna need a battery. At least that battery. I don't. I, I just. I charged that battery a long time ago and just set it under the bench. So we really should get charged up overnight. Back on. Nope. Let it run for a little bit. Let's cruise it easy. Try to anyway. Actually, I can get rid of the jumper pack. Watching how far I turn that way. say it doesn't turn on a dime but that's what a reverse is good for Break check. <laughs> Break check. The muffler's rattling on the enclosure.
Gotta put that set screw in. forgetting how to turn it off yeah just all the crap that I blew out of the muffler that was in the muffler is burning off I think the the fan will do it just good just right I know it looks like it's overheating but it's not yeah, it's not bad at all I think it's gonna work out awesome all right, guys, well, that's kind of the end of the show, and we're going to go wrap it up. I want to thank you guys for hanging, hanging out with me and uh, kind of following me through on this project. we got more to go, but uh, we got to do our first maiden voyage, though. I like it. I like the way it kind of runs. It runs like a, a um, early ATV with no suspension wood, because <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Uh, I'd say it probably is going to do 25. I think I'm, I'm pretty correct on that, because I, I want to say I, I at least got up to... 20 25 in the yard when I was hitting it full throttle and letting it go straight. I think if I get a, bit, a nice open area where I don't have to worry about the steering bouncing around, it'll do fairly decent. I don't know about uh, 40 like it was supposed to do. I think that would be really scary. But uh, guys, we're going to go wrap it up. I think my dinner just arrived. Just kind of pulled in the driveway. Not, no, I'm not going to eat her. Uh, <laughs> all right, enough. Till then, I'll see you in the next one. Later. One thing I think will help greatly is to put an automotive steering damper across that so when it swings it has a little bit of drag to it so it's not so bouncy I think that'll help. and it's the next morning I don't see a big puddle of gas down in there doesn't smell like gas through the battery on a battery charger on a trickle charge overnight let's see what do you say we pop it in neutral first that sounds better.